Hello everybody, my name is Eric Janofsky. I'm co-lead mentor of the Beta Wolves, Team 6637 out of Kearney, Michigan. Um, this video tutorial is going to go over the basics of creating a command-based robot project with VS Code. We used to use Eclipse, but now we're using VS Code. It's kind of new to me, um, so please bear with me if I stumble a little. Um, the, the entire tutorial series that I'm creating which this is just the first part of, is going to go over um, how to create a drivable robot in its simplest form. Um, the very basic way to do it. I'm trying to keep it super simple so we can uh, cover the basics of how to use a control stick to drive a chassis. And that's it. Hopefully from this you'll get a, a pretty good understanding of how the code is actually working and from then you can build more advanced concepts off of that. This, view, this tutorial here we're just going to be going over the files in a command based project and we'll build from there. So in VS Code to do anything I have to open my command palette. Uh, right here you can see that it's shift command P on a Mac or I'm sorry on a PC it would be shift control P I'd imagine but on my Mac shift Command P opens up this command palette. If I start typing in what I want to do, it'll auto complete below. So create, and you can see right here is create a new project. I'm going to hit enter. Uh, what type of project? Uh, well, I'm going to pick template. Language would be Java. Project base, we're going with command robot. Um, Iterative robot we used on, in our first year, and it was just a very large file with a lot of code, and it was unruly, it wasn't very modular, and it was hard to program. Um, so using command-based, as I'll show you in a minute, separates things in different files, and um, it's, it's just a lot more modular, and a lot more way to, uh, easier way to understand and scale your code. Um, select a new project photo, folder. I'm gonna select, um, let me show you where it is on my computer. When I set up VS Code, I created this workspace. Uh, so I'm just going to select the workspace and hit select folder. Project name, let's just call it my robot because I'm super creative. And my team number is 6637. Yours will be different. Generate project. Down here under my base is would you like to open the folder? And yes, I would like that and it opens up my robot. If you drill down into the source, you're gonna see a folder down here called robot, and that's the main folder that you're gonna be working out of. Um, you'll notice right away that there's three files in here and two folders. There's an OI file, a robot file, and a robot map. Now the robot file is the hub of the computer, or I'm sorry, of the robot. And we're gonna go over why that is, but I'm going to say it over and over, the robot file is the hub. So when you access things like subsystems and um, uh, different components of the robot, you're always going to go through the robot file with dot syntax. We'll talk about that more later. Um, there's an OI file. Now the OI file, I'm not sure if it stands for this, but I think of it as the operator input. I think that's what it means. So operator input would be anything that has to do with the operating or mashing buttons and sticks, right? So OI, operator input. Um, you can see there's code in here. There's a joystick stick. It's built right into the code, and that would be talking about this and the joystick as a whole. There's You can create buttons, and that just um, creates a variable and ports it or maps it to a button. So when you press the A, um, it would represent it be, would be represented by a button that you create. Um, and then you can also down here, look at this, this is pretty sweet. Button dot when pressed, launch this command. So you can map buttons to commands. So while you hold the trigger or while you hold the the Y button, a command gets fired. When you let it off, the command stops. So the OI is the operator input file. Um, I'm going to undo everything I did and save it. The robot map file is, a, is, I like to think of this as you map the ports on the system to variables. So why would you want to do that? Well, and what are ports? 
let's back up a little bit. On the Robo Rio, there's different kinds of ports. And let me let me type this in here real quick. There's PWM ports. There are uh, digital input output ports. There's a CAN bus. There are USB ports, and that might be in the laptop or the driver station that you're using. And so let's say you have a motor controller plugged into port one, a, a PWM port one, okay? And you have a second motor controller on your drivetrain plugged into PWM port two. So they're physically, there's wires connecting into these ports. Um, you're gonna need to know that in your code. And what we do in the robot map is we create a variable and we tell it, we make it equal to whatever port number that is. And we do that because if those port numbers get changed later, um, we have one place, the robot map file, it's one place where all that stuff is kept track of. So you don't have to dig through your code and um, you know uh, struggle later when you need to make a change. It's all in one place. Um, so in, for instance, I could say public static int, um, and I could name it left motor port equals one, right? It's pretty simple. Uh, later on, if you need to know uh, what the port the left motor is plugged into, you just access this variable here and, and anywhere in your code, and it'll equal out to one. Um, some other things you can do in the robot map, you can, you can keep track of constants. Uh, constants are things that don't change. So if you want to, um, you know, say, okay, public static int wheel diameter equals six, you might need to use that value, like six inches, say your wheel six inches uh, wide. You might need to use that value throughout your code. That's something that'll never change. It's a constant. So you can put it in the robot map. So maybe next year you have four inch wheels. All you'd have to do is come in here and change that to four. And the other places in the code where it references that wheel di diameter, it'll just automatically change throughout your code. So it's, it's really nice, really helpful. And I'm gonna undo everything I did in this file and save. The next thing, like I said, is the robot.java file. And this has a lot of code in it, um, but basically this is just the hub. And I say that because right here, you can see that there's an example subsystem that came with this templated code. And they're calling this inside the robot code. Anytime you create a subsystem, you're gonna wanna call it inside the robot file so that when you're in other parts of the robot code and you need to know something about a subsystem you go to robot and then the subsystem and then the methods inside the subsystem might sound complicated but it's really not we'll get into that in a later file that's all I'm going to say about the robot file right now subsystems themselves um, are um, it's like a, a representation of a major component on your robot a physical component so a subsystem might be the drivetrain a subsystem might be the, a claw, a uh, subsystem might be um, an intake or a shooter. So when you create a subsystem, you're going to create that file and then you're going to tell it different things about the subsystem, um, such as what its motors are. Um, and you're going to create different methods so that you can interact with that subsystem. You're not really telling anything to do anything. You're just defining your subsystem so other parts of your code can control it. Commands are used to do the controlling. So you'll create a drive subsystem and then you'll create a command that says drive 10 feet or drive straight or allow me to drive with the stick, right? Those are commands. So it's that coupling of code, the the operator input, the mapping of constants, the hub of the computer, understanding your soft, your your subsystem, uh, uh, your subsystems, and then being able to control them with commands that make up a command-based robot. In future tutorials, we're going to dig into each one of these, and we're going to start programming a drivable robot. Thank you very much.